Y'all like my hat? Let's get the full view. Yeah, money. <laughs> okay, so we haven't posted in a little bit. I apologize for that. But uh, you remember me talking about someone in my family wasn't doing good? Well, uh, she was my adopted mom. My biological mom hasn't had anything to do with me for years, and I've tried three times to go out of state to try to give her a chance to have a relationship with me. Needless to say, I was the one making the effort. And so, she's not in my life. Okay. If you have a parent that has not been there for you in your life, don't keep trying to make them have something to do with you. Mm-hmm. Because that's not your place. And they're supposed to be the adults. They should be the ones making the effort, not you. Yeah. But anyway, that's besides the point. Uh, my biological mother, um, it doesn't help, too, that she's been, you know, uh, still to this day she tries to stalk my social medias and stuff, which it is what it is. I just block her, okay? Someone does that, block them. Anyway, I got off track. My adopted mother had what was called cirrhosis, and she got it from a fatty liver. Now, you can get cirrhosis from drinking alcohol. You can get it from having a fatty liver, which is, like, too much weight on your liver. And, um... And so, she was going to a place to help her lose some weight. She had a really hard, uh, a hard time with fluid on her body because her liver was so bad. Yeah. And her doctors wanted to do a liver transplant on her, but they couldn't because they wanted her to lose weight so there's no complications during right. surgery. So... She ended up on aggressive dialysis and on, an, and on a, a, a respirator to help her kind of get some of that fluid off her body. But right. It just had already gone so far. It wasn't even hardly getting any off. And the doctor said that they did all that they could do for, for her. And so she got transferred to another, to another place, which me and Brooke went to go see her mm -hmm. uh, like three weeks ago or something like that. Yeah. Pay our respects, you know. Yeah. And, uh, needless to say, the doctors said that she only had a few days or a couple weeks to live. Mm -hmm. Um, she passed away a few days ago. Um, and before she passed, she had COVID. Right. And I knew that with her having uh, a bad health condition... That COVID would probably end up taking her out faster. Because if you don't have a really, like, strong immune system, COVID, you can have, like, different uh, symptoms of COVID. Mm -hmm. Depending on how good your immune system is. And hers I just wasn't it. because of her, um, you know, Condition. her cirrhosis and all that. And, um... I mean, I understand I got people that's, you know, saying, oh, I'm sorry for your loss, this and that. Well, it's kind of different. This grieving process is kind of different than me losing my dad and sister when I lost yeah. them in 2013 because they were good to me. Mm -hmm. My adopted mother was not good to me. Mm -hmm. You know, she was really abusive. She was narcissistic. And if you don't know what a narcissistic person is, look it up, okay? You were blessed. You will find, you will see exactly what I went through. Mm -hmm. Like, there's a lot of stuff I went through. I've had people messaging me, you know, oh, she was such a good person, you know, she was good to everybody, and I was like, look, this is how it was. Y'all yep. obviously didn't know her yep, so the way you media. thought you did, because yeah. she had, like, this, uh, persona. persona on the internet than she did in real life. And, um, 
Yeah, and we went to see her, and she was just kind of out of it. But yeah, people just are saying they're sorry, so it's just kind of hard. I guess she wasn't like how Terry and Cindy was to her. And, uh, am I thankful that she took me and my sister in? Yes, I am. Because there's no telling what would have happened to me. Yeah. And, uh, but the thing is, like, I have a mentally disabled sister. And, um, you know, the thing is, if you have someone that is a child or, you know, even just a teenager, mm -hmm. before you pass... You make sure you have stuff planned for after you pass. Anyone you're legally responsible for. You know, and the sad thing is, she didn't have any plan. Yeah. You know? And so now basically our family is just trying to Thank do what they can out. to make sure that everything's done the way it's supposed to be. Mm -hmm. Um... But I don't want nobody, so, you know, I don't want nobody feeling sorry for me for stuff I've been through in my life or what I've just said of how I was treated. Because I'm not the type of person that's looking for attention. I don't want nobody feeling sorry for me. I've been through a lot in my life. And through all the stuff I've been in my life, it's made me stronger. And so I just tried to teach people about my experiences so maybe it'll help other people. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's pretty obvious that I am because I am an author. I write books to help people. I just write books about, you know, stuff that I've been through in my life. I wrote a book, um, which I can put a picture of it later or something on here yeah. for you guys to see it if you want to. Um, just so you guys can see what kind of books I do. Um, and you I can did get one, them now. I, I, uh. I did one on uh, mine and my mentally disabled sister's biological mom. I recently did one um, of like a memory of my dad. I'm getting ready to do one of my sister um, that passed away with him. She was one of my older sisters. And uh, so that's why we haven't really been posting anything because we've been going through a lot of stuff. Plus, I start a new job tomorrow. Mm -hmm. um, I've been working on that book that I just got done of my dad. Um, and that's really time consuming, you know. Um, and we've been driving in out of state to help with um, the whole signing what we need to sign and getting what we need to get and all of that. And, you know, um, just making sure... You know, my sister's okay, my family's okay, because here's the thing. When you get older and you have people that, you know, are your friends or maybe certain family, mm -hmm. when you get older, you start realizing who your true family is yep. and who your tr true friends are. And recently, I've been cutting off a lot of my supposed-to-be friends because they're not mm -hmm. my friends. I'm there for them, but they could care less about me. You know, and once you get older and you start accepting that nobody, you know, you don't care if, you know, people will, you know, support you or want to be in your life. You just don't care anymore. So you don't let a lot of stuff get to you. And I've told a lot of people, and I know this is messed up to say, people are probably going to be in the comments, oh my god, you're such a horrible person. But when my adopted mother was alive, okay, I took care of her for a while. Mm -hmm. You know, and I even helped raise my nephews. And I've always been the type of person to help people, because I love to help people. I'm very caring. Yes. But... You got to stop doing that so much because then people will walk all over you and then they'll be like, oh, I can just do whatever I want. Yeah. You they know, don't treat care. them any type of way. They're not going to do nothing. And you just got to get to a point in your life where you're like, no, you know, I'm not going to put up with that. And that's where I've finally gotten uh, a point in my life. I've gotten to that. And, you know, I don't make these books for money. I can care less about money, because when you die, 
you don't have your money anymore. Yeah. I just make them to help other people. Maybe they've had someone that's narcissistic in their family or a friend. Maybe they've had a parent that's never been there for them in their life, and they've always wanted them to, and they and they always blame themselves. It's not your fault that a parent doesn't want to be in your life. Yep. That's their the job. Yep. You know, they should want to be in your life. And if they're not going to, cut them off. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and that goes also for relationships. And if you're in an abusive relationship and you're not happy, get out. You should not have to beg anyone to be in your life at the end of the day. They should want to be there. And you shouldn't just have them there to get something out of it. Neither should they. They shouldn't have you there just to get something out of you. And see, that's the thing. Um, I got off track here. But what I was trying to say is, uh, you know, my adopted mom, like I said, was really mean to me. But she's kept a lot of family from not wanting to come around. Uh, mm-hmm. Me and my sister... You know, she's trying to keep me from my sister. And I've just told people that I've noticed I'm actually my true self. Because me as a person, I love to make people laugh. I love to make people smile. And I do jokes all the time. Yeah. You know, I always joke around. That's just who I am. If you well, truly know me, you get to know me. I'm a, I'm a cool person. Well, I had a clip of what you were doing on the way into here. And, uh, <laughs> you know, it's just stuff like that. You know, when I'm actually my true self and I'm not depressed and I'm good mentally. Mm-hmm. I like to make people laugh. I like to make people smile. And I'm not a type of person that's going to try to, like, if you're going through something, I'm not going to try to tell you I understand if I haven't been through it. Because you're not going to understand a situation that you have never been in. So what I try to do is I just try to give advice for people. Um, And that's why a lot of my friends tell me that I'm a really good friend, that I help them, because I just tell them... Things that are true, I tell them things. I don't. I'm not. I'm the type of friend that I'm not going to tell you what you want to hear. I'm going to tell you what you need to hear, hear, regardless if you get mad at me or not. Yep. And that's the thing. Like, you know, you might be going through a time in your life. You're like, wow, well, you know, this friend's being mean to me, or this family member's being mean to me. You know, and you just, you know, just be like, no. You know, I, I know, my, I see my worth. I know what my, I know who I am as a mm-hmm. person. I'm a good person. If they can't see that, then bye. Mm-hmm. You know, and that's another thing. Like, even if, like, you're messaging your friends and they don't answer you or they just look at your messages and mm-hmm. don't respond, don't talk to them. Yeah. I made a friend of mine mad while, not too long ago because I got tired of, of the crap. And once you get tired of the crap, you don't care. Yep. Yeah. And that's the thing, like. And it's okay. And that's the thing, too, like. I realized after uh, my uh, adopted mom passed away, I started realizing more stuff about myself that I didn't know. I started having a different mindset on things. Mm -hmm. I started, uh, you know, cutting people off. I started doing what was best for me. Because if you're a person that's always there for people and no matter what you do for them, it's not good enough, you're going to get mentally and physically drained. And burned out. And you don't, you don't deserve that. So why, right. why keep doing stuff for people? Right. Especially when, for a lot of us that go through that, wouldn't even do, do that on purpose to someone else. So why are you putting yourself through it? And see, that's the thing, like, uh, you know, I have, I have more books that I'm going to do, um, Because I've tried doing, like, some made-up storyline books, but every time I get started on one, something always tells me to do a real-life storybook. Mm -hmm. And then I'll have, like, this uh, thought come in my mind about a a certain book to do. And I've got more self-help books, which I feel like that's what I'm supposed to be doing right now. Yeah. And, um, which is okay. I don't mind doing them. But sometimes when I do these type of books, I kind of have to take a break from it for a little bit because it will get to me mentally. And like, it will lot. make me depressed. I mean, you can ask her. She's even yeah. seen it happen. And, uh, but once I take a break for a little bit and then I go back to it, I'm okay. But, yeah. um, like, if, you, if you're if you someone that wants to become an author, my advice to you is really do your research on it. Mm-hmm. Um, because you want to do something that you want to do. And weigh the pros you know, and cons. You don't want to... How can I say this? You don't want to really focus on other people too much. Because let's say 
you know, you have something that you're, a certain book that you're supposed to do, and people tell you to do a different one. Well, of course you're going to want to do a different one, mm-hmm. because other people were like, hey, I like this book, I like right. that book. But if you stick to what you know, and you stick to what you believe, you can do those type of books. And it'll be easier to do. And the thing is, like, with these books, they're not, like I said, they're not easy to do. But this whole author thing, I started last year. And the thing is, when I grew up, I used to read books all the time. When I got older, I didn't like reading books. Now, I like to um, make my own books. And, see, that's the thing. Like, you, 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 like, when you're young, you don't expect to do anything, you know, really big in your life. Because... You know, people tell you, oh, you can't do this, you're not going to be nothing, you're always going to be alone, you know, you can't be successful. And then once you get older, you're like, no, you know, and you stop being afraid, don't, and that's the thing, do not let fear come in between you doing what you want to do. Yep. If it's positive, you go for it. Mm -hmm. Because fear will stop you from doing things that you're supposed to do on this earth. I truly believe everyone is here to do something, whether it's... You know, uh, doing a book or helping someone at work or helping someone at school. You know, stuff like that. And just within this last year, you've done four books now. She's done one on the, um, after her sister and dad died. Yeah, I've done, um, which I'll go ahead and tell you the titles. You know, and I'm not telling you this to be like, hey, go look at my book. Go buy my book. No, I'm not doing this video for that. But you can if you want to. Um, but I did my first one. Um, it's called Two Souls Lost. It's when I lost my dad and my sister. Um, they passed away from a, a drinking and driving accident when I was 17 in 2013. And I just put in there, you know, how, how I coped with out. it negatively yeah. to how I overcame that and became a better person. Um, my second book is My Mother's a Ghost, which is about my my adopted, my uh, biological. biological mother. Mm-hmm. Um, just to help people, you know, see that you can overcome. It, it, it doesn't matter. If you went, if you had a bad childhood, you yeah. can overcome that. And you can be better than the people that hurt you. Mm-hmm. I did a book about my adopted mother. I was honest. You know, and at first, I'm going to be honest with you. When I started doing that book... I felt so bad because she was in bad health. I did. I felt so bad because that's the type of person I am. I'm really caring. Yeah, she even stopped doing it. I stopped doing it, and I actually ripped it up and threw it away. Yep. Well, then I had someone that's one of my really close friends. She's like a mother to me in a way. Um, She told me to go ahead and do it. So I was like, okay. Well, at at the time, I was like, I don't know if I should do this book or not. And then something told me, no, you need to. You need to put everything Your story. in there that's mm-hmm. true. You need to put everything in there. Because if you don't, how are you going to help other people that have been maybe through the same stuff? Yeah. So I did that one. And then I just got done with my dad's. And it's just like a, like I said, a memory, you know, a memory of my dad Fun book. Fun stories. I'm going to do one, like I said, of my sister. And then I got one that I'm going to do about overcoming suicide mm-hmm. because... I have overcame suicide. Mm -hmm. I was so close to just wanting to end it all. I did not care about my family. I did not care about my friends. And it's a scary thing because when you are really suicidal, you know, when you're going through that, you're in a dark place in your mind. And you actually plan out how you're going to do it. Yeah. Your brain lets you think it's acceptable. And, um... I'm not the type of person that's going to cry out for help if I'm going through something. I deal with it on my own. Only because in our family... That's how you were raised. That's how I was raised. If I tried to tell someone yeah. how I felt, you know, oh, you just want attention. You're just being weak. So I just got to the point, okay, I'm just going to deal with stuff on my own. Because I'm not going to tell somebody something that's hurting me and then them just say that. Yeah. And it make me feel like crap even more, so I'm just going to deal with it on my own. Right. Yeah. Um, also, let's keep in mind when she does the story about her adopted mother, that's just her side. There was, what, seven kids all in total involved? Yeah. They um, all have their own different stories. And see, I had someone tell me, you know, I don't think I could do books bashing someone. Okay, for one, 
That's not what I'm trying to do in this book. Yeah. When I made it, that's not what I was trying to do. But I have to put everything that ever happened to help others. To help other people. Yeah. Because they, when they read my books, I want people, and I pray that when people read my books, that it will help them overcome certain situations that I went through that's kind of similar. Right. You know, because a narcissistic person isn't just a parent. It can be a friend. It can mm-hmm. be someone in a, a relationship. for some situations. You know, it could be, it could be even a teacher that a you have at school. Yeah. You know? And so you want to... Be able to see the signs, so that way you're like, okay. You can navigate I read, it. I read, you know, Jess's book. This is what she said. I'm seeing the signs. I need to, I need to, you know, distance myself. Yeah. Because whenever you deal with someone that's narcissistic, you have got to set boundaries. Mm-hmm. You have to. Otherwise, they will mentally drain you, physically drain yep. you, emotionally drain you. And then you're going to be feeling like crap, and you're going to be like, oh, what's wrong with me? And then you're going to be blaming yourself for stuff that's not even your fault. Mm -hmm. For years, I've blamed myself for stuff that wasn't even my fault. My own family, I've talked to about certain things that I have blamed myself for for years, and it's not my fault. Mm -hmm. They tell me it wasn't my fault. There's no reason to feel guilty because it wasn't my fault. Yeah. And see, that's the thing. A narcissistic person will will come in between your siblings. They'll come in between relationships. They will even come in between uh, co-workers, you and your co-workers, your teachers. I mean, they'll do whatever they can to get that type of control. Yeah. And a lot of times, like, I know in in our situation was adding, like, a competition aspect pretty much to life. Your friends, your family, they put siblings up against each other. Which just makes a hostile, on edge environment. Your whole, like, when you're at your house, it's just supposed to be your safe space. And see, here's the thing. I will, I will kind of explain to you, like, what a narcissistic person does. Okay? My dad, for instance, when I was growing up, he told me that he didn't have the best life growing up. That he was abused. And that he just wanted his kids to have a better life than what he had. And to also be successful. Mm -hmm. Because he was raised kind of like in the same family where they were really strict. Like I said, he was abused. And my dad was really down on himself. He didn't really believe in himself too much when it came to certain things. Well, after my dad got out of that, uh, you know, out of that house with his family, he became a first responder. He became a firefighter. And he also became a mason in the Masonic Lodge. Mm -hmm. And, um... The thing is with Masonic Lodge is when you're like like for instance, like I said, my dad was a Mason. So if you were a Mason and you pass away, the Masonic Lodge has to take care of your family. That's just that's just part of it. That's what they have to do. Now, narcissistic people is different. They will be jealous of their own children, whether they go to college, whether they have a nice job, whether they have a nice vehicle, whether they have a good marriage. They will be jealous of you. Mm. And no parent should be ever be jealous of their children. Yeah. Never. You would you should want better for your children. And something that me and uh which I'm not gonna say any names, but something that me and one of my family members talked about is the thing is like our adopted mother didn't even apologize on her deathbed what she's done to every to single anyone. one of her kids. Her answer was, well, I didn't have a good childhood. Well, I've told my adopted mother before that, you know, just because you had a, you know, a bad childhood, you brought it into our family. So now it's up to all of us kids to break that generational curse. So, th- so that way we don't end up, you know, making our kids go through the same thing or being the same way to our kids. And like, your dad, he didn't have a good childhood either. And he still was breaking generational curses, even while he was having to be with her. Yeah, and see, that's the thing. My dad knew what it was, what it felt like to go through that. And, you know, that's why he treated us different. Because he didn't want the same type of life that mm-hmm. he had growing up for us. Right. You know, and... um my advice for someone that's lost a parent or maybe a couple people in their family at the same time or maybe 
not even at the same time, maybe two people in one year. My advice for you is, you know, people always say, I had someone tell me one time, you know, it should only take you a couple of days to get over your dad and sister. No, I thought. I got so mad that I wanted to punch that person in the face, but I didn't. But the thing is, my advice is, um, with time, it gets a little easier. Yeah. As time passes, it'll get a little easier because when my dad and my sister passed away, I didn't know how I was going to live life. I didn't know what I was going to do. I didn't know how I was going to live without them, mm -hmm. you know, um, and it's just like, you might think that it's the end of the world, but it's not. And the thing is, when someone passes away, like a loved one passes away or something, you know, you want to do your best to make them proud. You want to live your life happy and making them proud because that's what they would want, you know. And, yeah, it sucks. You know, my dad raised me, life's not fair, even if we don't know what the reason is. And that's the thing, like, that's one of the reasons I won't let nobody feel sorry for me whenever I've gone through a lot in my life because life's not fair. But that's what my dad taught me. And I might have not understood why he passed away or my sister passed away. But when they did. There, there's always a reason for something. Yeah. And, and that's the thing, like, the hardest thing for me was when I got with Brooke to, like, not be looking over my shoulder. Not being you know, yelled at or screamed at or cussed at or downgraded or anything. Yeah. Because that's what I've been through my whole life. You know, my, my biological mother, when I went to Kansas for like three times to try to give her a chance to have a relationship with me, she told me, you were a mistake. I wish you were never born. You know, stuff like that. Yeah. And when people tell you that stuff, it gets you down. It really does. But the thing is, um, when you... When you get away from people that are negative like that, you can breathe. You know, your life is so much better. Yeah. And it's okay to be happy. It's okay. You should not feel guilty. Mm -hmm. And I'll be honest, when I got with her and I moved with her in this uh, apartment, I did feel guilty. I felt guilty all the time. I even had headaches because I was so stressed out. Because whenever I was living with my adopted mom at the time, I had headaches all the time because of stress and tension. And when I got up here, I was looking over my shoulder, expecting her to yell at me, expecting her to scream at me, expecting her to cuss at me, yeah. downgrade me. And that's the thing. Even if you get in a positive environment, yeah, it's going to take a little time to get used to not being treated like that, and it's okay. But the thing is, like, when you're so used to living that type of life, that's what you expect with everyone. It doesn't matter if someone's... I'm to get the charger. It doesn't matter if someone's like, you know, um, you know, I'm always here for you if you need me, you know, if you want to talk to somebody, we can talk. And, see, that's the thing, like, when you've been through really abusive, like, living in a really abusive environment, you're still going to be expecting to be, be treated like crap, and you're not really going to believe... The people that are positive in your life. Right. Because you're afraid that people are going to disappoint you. You're afraid that people are going to hurt you. And for years, I would not let myself get attached to people because every time I did, they either, you know, pass away or, you know, um, leave. Or they'd leave. You know, and when people do that to you, you start getting like this wall built up where you're like, no. I'm going to distance myself a little bit so that way I don't end up and getting protect hurt. myself. Because when you're hurt like that, your hurt turns to anger and mm. then you're miserable. Another thing is you end up learning what your triggers are. Because when you are in such a toxic and awful environment and you come to a new one, you actually get time to process in your brain what actually bothers you and what is the issue here. So here's my thing. I do have an Instagram. Um, and I will put the, the link for it down below. So that way if you've ever, you know, been, you know, 
had someone in your life that's narcissistic or you've had an abusive relationship, I can talk to you about that because I've been through both of those. And they're not fun. No. They're not. And you're miserable. And if you do end up, you know, checking out my books or whatever, you can message me. Yeah. And we can talk about it. Because I'm, I'm the type of person... I don't mind talking to people about stuff I've been through in life because I love to help people. And it helps process stuff. And I also don't want people to feel, you know, um, to have to go through what I went through or feel the same way I did. And see, that's the thing. When you get away from negative people, stuff in your life starts happening at the right time. Like positive place. things start falling into place. Mm -hmm. Like a new job. Having new friends. You know, finding someone that's the right person. You know, Better in a relationship. You know, people come into your life, and you don't expect them to be like a motherly figure or like a brother to you or like a fatherly figure. And I honestly, I'm the type of person that things happen for a reason and that certain people that come in your life are either a blessing or a lesson. You just have to figure out which one they are. Mm -hmm. And once you figure out that, you're okay. And I know it's hard to take me serious with my Scooby-Doo hat, but I love this hat. And we do have two more announcements. One. No, we're not pregnant. <laughs> yet. One, we got engaged. Two, don't mind the chip nails. Don't look at them. Now. <laughs> and also, we have a guinea pig. A guinea pig. His name's Teddy. Can I turn you guys around? No, I can't. It's okay. I'll add a clip in for you guys. He's in our room. He's chilling. He's in a temporary setup right now. Um, and we just have one right now. We want to get two since the guinea pigs are like a herd animal. Um, so he'll be happy with two. But right now we just give him lots of attention. And he's been doing okay. Um, but yeah. We want to get another one and we're going to get a better cage set up. So... Yeah, those are pretty much our announcements. And I have some advice for you guys. I know tax time is coming up. Um, here's the thing. I was never taught how to save money in my family. Nobody ever taught me. Mm -hmm. But my advice to you is if you don't want to keep your money at a bank, get a safe. Or like a lockbox type thing. Because I'm the type of person, like... If I'm making money and I put my money in there, I like a challenge. You know, I see my money in that safe and I'm like, okay, I can't spend it. I really want to, but I can't. And then once you, you know, start putting more money in there, mm -hmm. you'll be like, oh, wow, I'm, I'm really building my money up right here. You know, your girl's getting, you know, successful over here. You'll start feeling better about yourself. You know, and every day that you wake up, think of something positive. If you have to go in front of the mirror and say, oh, you're so sexy, you know, and wink at yourself or, you know, say, you know, I'm going to be successful. I'm going to do this today. I'm going to do that today. If someone needs me, I'm going to help them today. You know, stuff like that, because you start out your morning positive, you're more likely to have a good day. Even if something negative pops up, you'll just laugh at it. Because there's been a lot of negative happening in my life, and any more you can ask her, I just laugh about it and go on. Yeah. Because my dad taught me, you know, something happens in your life, even if you cry about it, even if you get mad about the situation, it's not going to change the situation, so why get mad about it? You know? Mm -hmm. Just ride out the storm, because I truly believe obstacles and storms in life help make you stronger. And it helps your mindset to where if something happens that's negative, you're like, okay, I'll just fix it. Or, you know, I'll just buy this next time. You know, just something like that. And also, tomorrow's Valentine's Day. We're going to have to say bye to you guys soon just because we're running out of space. But tomorrow's Valentine's Day. And baby, they're backwards for you. But baby got Swedish fish. And I got these. If mean, you haven't had these, they're the Warthers Original, and then they have the um, Chocolate Centers. They're good. Anything else you want to tell them, Scooby-Doo?
No, just, uh, you know, just don't let people get to you. Because honestly, nobody in this world knows you better than you do yourself. If people are giving you a hard time, chances are you're more hard on yourself than anyone that's ever started rumors about you or whatever. You know, because I've had people try to start rumors about me, and I don't, even, I don't even hardly get out. You know, when I was living in the small town I was in, I had people talking about me all the time, and I hardly ever got out of the house. People are going to talk. Mm -hmm. There's going to be people that don't like you. Just move on. You don't have to be around them. You don't have to talk to the people that are, you know, starting rumors about you. But see, the thing is, if someone is talking to you and you listen for a while, you you watch their body language, you watch how their tone is in their voice, you know, if you feel that their energy is not the same towards you, then that's how you know that they feel different towards you. And the mm -hmm. thing is... When they're talking and you listen long enough, they will eventually tell on themselves without even knowing they're telling on themselves. Yep. Scooby Doo out. Okay, bye guys. Like, comment, and subscribe. It's free. And you know what I always say? Tell your haters to suck. You ready? Mm hmm. Yeah. Oh, let's go to the bedroom, girl. Work it, honey.